This is Jess, Wes and our daughter Izzy. After selling our house and most of our possessions at the end of 2021, we've packed up our Van Bevan to tour Australia. We are Life is Vanderful. We travel from Myrtleford to Canberra and we stop in at Jindabyne and head up to Thropo for a little snowy experience. So we rolled into Myrtleford last night and we, or yesterday afternoon, and we saw signs to say that there is a fair on in town. And we've gone to quite a few towns um, where we've seen that a fair has been on or is going to be on and we always just missed it. So this time, because we're here on the exact day, we thought we'd go and check out some of the rides and games and exhibits. It's a bit like a, like a rural kind of country show where they've got animals and everything too. <gasps> animals! Animals! Mm. Yay! That's what I got! Yeah? Do you want to go see the animals? Oh! Ooh, do you want to go on any rides? Do you want to play games? Yeah! Yes! Let's go! So we only ended up spending about an hour at the fair. Izzy was in a, let's call it a grumpy mood today. So next stop, mum and dad need a coffee. So we're off to go get a coffee from the market. When we got to Myrtleford, we were so excited to see that there was a fair on in town. Cause we've been through so many towns on our travels where we've seen signs saying town fair and it's been the weekend before or the next weekend. Um, and Izzy's never been to like a show, festival, carnival sort of environment yet. So we were so excited. <laughs> but then it's just one of those days um, where she was a little bit tired and she wanted to be carried the whole way. And it was right before a storm. So it was muggy and it was sweaty and it was muddy <laughs> and she was upset. So all we did really was um, go on one pony ride, which is a new thing that she likes although she was very particular about the pony um, and got a balloon and then we left. Um, another reason why is the rides were extortion. They wanted $10 per person for a teacup ride, including Isabel. So it would have been $30 for us all to sit on one of those little teacups going round and round. So we got out of there and luckily just before all the rain hit anyway. And then we took around, a look around um, the Myrtleford market they have a farmers market on Saturdays I think it's the fourth Saturday of every month or it could be every Saturday I'm not sure um, but it was small but really good they had fresh trout and salmon um, fresh fruit and veggies uh, bread lots of other locally made delights we picked up some really yummy strawberries and we picked up some locally crafted beers as well um, which you got to taste there and then just grabbed some coffees, had a little look around town, um, lots of beautiful roses in Metalford. And then we took off to our next port of call. So now we are at the base of Kosciuszko Mountain. Um, so we're just down the, down the bottom before you start heading up into the national park. Um, and that's where we're going today. We're gonna drive up to Threadbow Resort and take a little look around look a little bit different in um, this time of year to winter. We're just about one month out of the end of the ski season, but it's still expected to be pretty cold. So about nine or 10 degrees today. So we've got the thermals on, we've got the beanies ready and ready to start exploring that part of Australia today. We started our trip this morning at Khan Coburn uh, and we've got five kilometers into our trip going up to um, Kosciuszko and to Threadbow. And we stopped here at the Snowy Hydro power station. So it's one of seven power stations on the mountain. 
Uh, this whole complex was uh, completed in 1974 and it took 25 years to make so it's a huge civil engineering project that took took many many years. There's uh, 16 dams in the area that they use to um, pump and flow water through. Um, yeah, seven, seven different um, power stations, two of them are underground. There's 145 kilometres of tunnels and uh, I think 74 kilometres of aqueducts. So there's yeah, water going everywhere, up and down the mountain. And when you consider this is Australia's steepest, steepest mountain range, um, yeah, it's quite a, quite a feat. So we're going to keep going now and it's about an hour and a half to, uh, to Threadbow. And what? Passes? No. We're not going to keep going now. <laughs> um, Jess has just reminded me to speak about the passes. So uh, we just purchased a park pass. <laughs> purchased a park pass, PPP, this morning at Carn Coburn. Um, it's seventeen dollars uh, now. We're in, we're in October. We're, we're out of the peak season, so it's seventeen dollars for a pass for for one day. Um, you can buy. Um, you can bundle it up with your annual pass. Um, for the New South Wales Parks and Wildlife Service. So we bought a $65 annual pass back in February that covers every park in New South Wales except for this one. So you can you can get an annual pass that includes Mount Kosciuszko, but it's $190. So we're just coming here for one day, $17 daily pass makes a lot more sense. But you can if you're doing a lot of um, trips to Mount Kosciuszko in the ski season, that might make more sense, but for us, it's better to do it this way. So here we are. It's a good look, isn't it? The sunnies and the and the beanie. Uh, we are going up the chairlift to. I'm not sure what the. It's vibrating. I'm not sure what the um, this part of the mountain's called. Um, but yeah, the main gondolas are shut because it's it's approaching summer, even though it's bitterly cold, freezing cold. Um, there is snow on top of the mountain. I'm not sure we're going to get up high enough to to be in the snow. Uh, but we are packed with thermals, gloves, beanies, hats and Isabel and Jess are behind me and she is ratchet strapped to Jess for safety so um, yeah, we've <laughs> got the ratchet straps out um, to make sure she's tight and not going to wiggle and not going to move so yep, for grandma, grandpa, nanny, granddad, all the people back home we, are, uh, we strapped, her, strapped her in so um, so this is today's, yeah, today's adventure. We, um, took us about two hours to get from Khan Coburn to Threadbow Village here. So there's an hour and a half on Google Maps, but with the van, just taking it easy. Lots of up and down sections. Um, so yeah, just using the engine braking, just being gentle on the brakes, because there's downhill sections as well as uphill, um, coming from Khan Coburn to, to Threadbow. And yeah, we'll spend the spend the afternoon here and then we've got about another half an hour 45 minute trip down back down the mountain further on to Jindabyne so I hope the audio on this is is okay with all the vibration I can hear my voice vibrating um, so yeah that's that's today's plans and let's see if we can zoom in and see Izzy and Jess behind me First snow. Who needs a drone? We made it to the top, and this is Izzy's first time in the snow. Oh, it's a mini snowman! <laughs> 
<laughs> Yay! Are you having fun in the snow, is he? No. Yes, say yes to the camera. Make it seem like we're good parents. No, no, no. You said you're having fun before. No, mommy. Cheers. Cheers. Bottoms up. Going back down the mountain now after having some peach naps for me and mulled wine for Jess and just some brandy for Izzy. So heading down now, um, we're going to go do the toboggan. So we've been really lucky with the weather. Um, it was sunny yesterday, but then it absolutely bucketed down rain and, and some of the most rain that the Murray region has seen for for years it was torrential we we're actually worried that Bevan was going to get bombed yesterday where we were staying um, that much rain came down but thankfully it, it stopped raining and it was dry overnight and sunny this morning um, and then apparently it's going to be absolutely bucketing down tomorrow so I wish we could say that we planned it exactly for for today um, to, to be here but it was just sort of part of our trip part of our drive. I'm going to be here today anyway, but we've landed on the, the perfect day to come up here where it isn't raining, there's still snow, the roads were still um, in good conditions, they were dry. Uh, obviously with it being twisty and windy, the last thing you want is, is rain or anything like that um, coming up here to Threadbow. And also the toboggans don't open if it's raining, so we're going to do that next, so that's another good reason for the, that the weather's, weather's um, holding off for us. Um, so yeah, we're just about to go over the, the last station here and then down into Threadbow. Iggy's literally strapped to mum, aren't she? Look at the strap off. Ratchet straps come in handy. Have fun. Take it slow. Hold on. Good luck. Put the brake down. Sorry, I'm heavy. I'm not going to I'm just heavy. Again. Break. Can you down help you? Oh uh, yeah, let's keep it down for now. <laughs> you can do it! Oh, no! Kind of. Oh. Bye! You might get there, you can do it!
made it to Jindabyne, so it's about 30 minutes down the hill from Threadbo. Um, lovely little town here, you know, a bit bigger than Threadbo, with, with supermarkets, fuel, all that type of thing. And we've just camped up here on the shores of Lake Jindabyne. So Lake Jindabyne, they flooded this to make the dam uh, back in the 60s. And there's still remnants of a town underwater here. So people do go diving and you, there's, there is remnants of um, like cottages and houses that, are, that is underwater. And yeah, sometimes when the, the dam levels get very low, you can, you can see little bits and pieces of the, of the old, old Jindabyne town that's, that's down underwater. Um, now they've built Jindabyne up on the up on the hill here a little bit, but there was an old town of about 300 people um, from the 60s that that was sort of down um, where the where the water is now, and uh, he has no chance of seeing anything down at the water level uh, on a day like today because the rain has been immense uh, the last um, probably probably a week week and a half. Um, it eased off eased off. Um, Two days ago, yesterday, and today, but it's been it's been terrible, and even part of the um, the park here where we're staying is is flooded a little. We're about two three meters up from the the water, so we're we're okay at the moment. But yeah, that just sort of shows you how much um, how much rain there's been lately. Uh, and there's there's also a, a rumor um, that Jess told me about that there, there's a church that's sunken under the water here, and then when it gets really low, you can see the steeple of the church. Um, but apparently that's just a myth. We looked it up, we were going to see if it might be visible today. Um, but yeah, we looked it up and that's, that's apparently a myth. Um, so Jess, Jess actually worked here um, maybe 18, 20, 20 years ago at Jindabyne and, and Threadbow. So that was always told to her as a, as a myth. So she, she thought that was real, but we looked it up and apparently it's just a bit of a, bit of a porcupine. Um, we're having meatballs for dinner tonight. And I don't know if we've ever shown you guys this, but this is our, our pan, we use for a lot of cooking, and you can see it doesn't have a handle on it. So that just helps us get it in the in the cupboards. Um, so if this little handle that we uh, that we pop on like so, that just helps us with all our extra uh, extra space in the cupboards. So seven months ago, pretty much at the beginning of our journey, we passed through Canberra and we spent a day here and we visited Questacon, which was a whole lot of fun for Izzy and us. Um, and today we just happened to be passing through Canberra again. So we're spending two nights here. And today we are doing all the free things that you can do in Canberra. This morning we went to the Royal Mint and had a look at how coins were made. Colouring in station. I posed all these questions. The kids have been answering them. What could I buy with 2650? Why do we still need coins? What would I give? And they're all heartwarming tales about giving to homeless people, shelters, kids who don't have lunch. But I think Caitlin's got it best. Five cupcakes. Go, Caitlin. Entry to the mint is free and you get to see the production floor of where they make all the tools, the dyes, the st stamping for the, all the coins um, and we learnt that the mint can make up to 2 million coins per day and each die that makes, that makes a particular coin can be used a quarter of a million times before it needs to be replaced. Um, so they're just two of the facts. It's not a, not a big, um, big building, lots to do, but good for the kids, there's drawing, see some coins and, and Izzy's really hoping to get some chocolate coins. We went to the mint to get a chocolate coin. Ooh. Is it chocolate mint flavour? Yeah, I'll have a chocolate coin too. Is it good? And now we are here checking out uh, every country's flag and trying our best to say which ones they are to Izzy and we're going to take her to the National Portrait Gallery to check out some beautiful portraits as well. Um, and we drove past Parliament House. So yeah, day of free stuff. Um, 
some interesting <laughs> and yeah then we might go check out a, a really cool playground of course we always have to end the day with a cool playground um, and we found one with some giant acorns that we'll check out on the way home So we absolutely loved the Portrait Museum. Uh, they were really friendly to Iggy as well. Some museums can be a bit tricky with kids, um, but she really liked looking at all the pictures and describing what she thought each uh, face in each portrait was feeling or thinking, if they were happy or sad or cross. Um, and there was some sort of visual movie art as well, which she really, really loved. Um, so we went there, which was nice. And now we've come to the National Arboretum of Australia. Um, so basically like a big tree park with tall pines and other beautiful plants and they even have a little bonsai room here as well with some really huge bonsais. The main reason we came is because there is a fantastic looking playground which I mentioned earlier and there's a really good spot on the hill to fly kites. So we brought Iggy's kite with us and we haven't flown it once on the trip so we'll get the kite out this afternoon. Um, and the view from up here too. If you're looking for the best view in Canberra, come here because from here you can see the Telstra Tower, Parliament House, uh, the big fountain, um, just epic views all over Canberra. So definitely don't miss this one if you're in town. Thanks so much for watching. If you're liking our videos, please subscribe.